Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. The big news for today is the American President Joe Biden saying that if China tries to attack Taiwan, then US will come to the help of Taiwan militarily. That is why we are today focusing on what exactly is the One China policy as is followed by the US. How is the One China policy of US different from the one that is followed by China as such? Now, I'm very sure that you would be familiar with this phrase of one China policy. This is a phrase that is continuously used in international diplomatic circles day in and day out. In very simple terms, under this policy, the US agreed that, OK, there is only one China. That is, US will not regard China and Taiwan as two separate countries altogether. The US agreed that, OK, we will not have any official relations with Taiwan. We'll only have relationship with China whose official name is the People's Republic of China. And all our relationship with Taiwan, which is officially called the Republic of China, will be through Beijing only. This is the one China policy. That is, these two entities, China and Taiwan, are one single nation altogether. This was seen as an attempt by the US to balance its relationship with China. Because as you know, China does not want any country in the world to recognize Taiwan as an independent sovereign country. China has always wanted that any relationship or any communication with Taiwan must happen through Beijing only. As I said, the reason why this topic is in the news is because of this statement made by the US President Joe Biden that US would defend Taiwan if it is attacked by China. This is not a statement that has come out of the blue. This is a statement or an issue that has been in discussion for a long time ever since Russia decided to invade Ukraine. Because no Western country directly came up to help Ukraine, there were talks that what if the same situation is repeated between China and Taiwan. The US here has made it very clear that if China does attempt any such kind of an attack on Taiwan, that, that America will intervene to help Taiwan. Now, there is a very interesting history of the UN-Taiwan ties. If you actually go back, you will see that in 1979, the US parliament actually passed a law which was called the Taiwan Relations Act, that is TRA of 1979. The law says that the US decision to establish diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China, that means Taiwan, rests upon the expectations that the future of Taiwan will be determined by peaceful means. It also said that they will be providing Taiwan with arms of a defensive character. So what America has done is they have kept a backdoor entry to Taiwan they have a law under which they say that we will be supplying arms to Taiwan, just that they would be of defensive character. Now, who defines what is defensive character? Who defines whether these arms can be used to attack or not? That still remains a debatable point in this particular law. Also, interestingly, what America did was, America established something called American Institute in Taiwan, AIT. Now, officially on paper, this is not a government organization. This is a private organization. But the entire world knows that this is actually an unofficial US embassy in Taiwan only. Because US follows a one China policy, they cannot officially open up any embassy in Taiwan. So in place of that, they have opened up this kind of an office called the American Institute in Taiwan that does every single thing that an embassy usually does. So this is the present situation between US and Taiwan. Now, if you actually look at this problem, you would have to understand how did it that this problem actually started? How is it that China and Taiwan are two separate entities? For that, you have to go back to a lesson of world history in 1949, that is the Communist Revolution in China. Now, the China that you see today was actually ruled by the Nationalist Party. This Nationalist Party was opposed by another party called the Communist Party, led by leaders such as Mao Zedong. Now, the Communist Party was the one that engaged in a long battle with the Nationalist Party. And they were successful because of the people's support and the charisma of their leaders. The Nationalist Party and their leaders were forced out of China and they were forced to take refuge in a very small island to the south of China, which is called Taiwan. So the Nationalist Party that was officially ruling over China was forced to a small island called Taiwan, while the Communist Party usurped the power and became the rulers of China. Since then, there has been this fight, according to which the leaders of Taiwan say that they are the real China. They should be recognized by the world as China, while the 
कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी सेज एट वी आर द रियल चाइना एंड वी यू सी वी आर द वंस हु हैव ऑल द पावर्स एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कम्युनिकेट विथ ताइवान डू वेट थ्रू अस ओनली ताइवान हैज इट्स कैपिटल एट ताइपे ऑल्सो कॉल द चाइनीज ताइपे दिस इज द नेम अंडर विच दे पार्टिसिपेट इन ओलंपिक्स एज वेल Now both these governments had been making competitive claims saying that we are the ones who deserve to be called China. In fact the nationalist government in Taiwan was the one that initially had the permanent seat in the UN Security Council. It was only after much later on that the entire world decided that okay this seat should be given to the Communist Party of China and not to Taiwan because the Communist Party in China has a real powers right now. It was only 1971 that the china that we see today managed to enter the un through a resolution 2758 and was officially called the representative of china in fact so much so that us did not recognize today's china till 1979 it was only after that that they initiated the one china policy another important event between the relationship of us and china was actually the ping pong diplomacy ping pong as you know is a chinese name for table tennis It was in 1971 that American table tennis players went to China. When you say went to mainland, that means today's China, and that was the first time that the sports athletes from the two nations faced off each other in a form of diplomacy called the ping pong diplomacy. Then in 1972, American President Richard Nixon also went to China. This was a trip that led to something called the Shanghai Communique. This was the first major milestone in between the bilateral relationship of US and China and it led to the birth of the one China policy. In this communique it was said that the US acknowledges that all the Chinese on either side of the Taiwan Strait maintain there is one China and Taiwan is a part of China. This led to a lot of hurtful feelings in Taiwan but America also knew that if they have to go forward in this region they have to have good relationship with the mainland China and that is what is followed even till today As I said in the beginning of this particular video the one China policy as is followed by the US and as China wants the world to follow is slightly different from each other China has always regarded that Taiwan is not a country it is an integral part of China just that we are giving them some freedom to operate on their own and they want the entire world to acknowledge the same however nations such as us whenever they talk about the one china policy they do make certain clarifications for example us earlier said that it is one china principle it was only 1980s that they started to use the word policy also whenever the american officials talk about the one china policy they also talk about a lot of clarifications For example they say that yes we do follow and support the one china policy but only as long as china also follows the wordings of the communiques of 1972 78 82 meaning that china should not try to forcefully change the politics of taiwan they should not interfere in the internal politics and the way of life of taiwan only and only then america would continue supporting the one china policy America also underlines the fact that we also have our own Taiwan Relations Act of 1979 under which we want a peaceful relationship to exist between the two sides and if China forcefully tries to change this relationship then US would have no option but to intervene that is something that China does not appreciate because they think that dealing with Taiwan is an internal matter altogether This is everything that you needed to know about the one china policy and the reason why the statement made by the US president is in the news. Thank you so much for watching the big news. Have a good day ahead.